scout from Manitoba that knew we were Canadian had Canadian citizenships. So I don't know if it was like common knowledge, but when we were, we ended up making a Four Nations roster when we were 17 with uh, Team USA. So that ended up being once we got called up to that roster and had the opportunity, it was there was no going back uh, on on it for us anyways. So. Wow, that's a huge oversight by Hockey Canada right there. <laughs> Hey guys, welcome on Into Drinks with Binks. I'm Julie Stewart Binks. You know the show. This is where we sip and sit with the biggest names in sports, entertainment, and media. And I am so excited to be drinking and binking today with two absolute badasses on and off the ice. None other than three-time Olympic medalists, recently published authors, Team USA, just royalty right now. We've got Jocelyn Lamaru Davidson and Monique Lamaru Miranda. Ladies, so happy to have you here on the show. First of all, congratulations on the retirement and also the book launch. And what are we drinking here today and toasting to on this on this beautiful Monday that we're shooting this? We have iced coffees because it was minus 30 last week, but it's 30 degrees today. So that 60 degree difference is where they have a cold drink of a, of a cold drink today. So I love that. Yes, you would know the cold climates well and the warm climates well. And those temperatures in North Dakota where you're coming to us from, that's no joke. Like that's some serious pond hockey you've got going on. Yeah, it was like mine. Well, I think it was actually, I think it had a feel like temperature of minus 50 at one point. So the fact that we're above zero the past two or three days is, is a big win for us right now. <laughs> yeah, that's huge. Now, I'm always very confused then if like you're talking in Celsius or Fahrenheit, but let's just say it was it was pretty cold. It was cold. Now it's it was. Yeah. yeah. No one's going All outside. Right. <laughs> Yes. Okay. Well, we will be inside Iowa and I'll take this opportunity to cheers to you guys for everything that you've done on and off the ice and take a little cheers. Cheers. Yeah. You guys can actually cheers. That's the first time that I've had two people together that can clink those glasses. Um, you, both of you guys, congratulations. As I mentioned, um, you wrote your book that has, when this airs has come out, dare to make history, chasing a dream and fighting for equity. What are you most excited about for people to read in this book? I think there's a combination like our, there's our career, which I, from a, from a hockey fan standpoint might seem very linear. And, uh, you see the success that Olympic athletes have. You don't, you don't really see the adversity or what it really takes to get there a lot of times. And so we're excited to share our story, to share the ups and downs on and off the ice and really paint a full picture of what our journey has been like. And so we're really excited about that. And then also I think the bigger underlying theme is it, it's not just about hockey for us. It's never just about been chasing medals and trying to win hockey games. It's about making an impact beyond your time uh, at the rink. And we're, we're obviously recently just announced we're retired. And we believe that the, the platform that we've created is going to allow us to help make a difference and hopefully change many people's lives in a positive way. We want to inspire others to do the same thing. Yeah. And then obviously we go through our, our account of our Olympic gold medal run and everything we went through that season. So it was fun get in the writing process. So it was fun to be able to kind of relive all of that and, and go through it kind of just step by step in detail. So we hope the, we hope the hockey fans enjoy that as much as we have. Right. And the writing process must have been unique as you wrote it together. What was the maybe biggest challenge of trying to find your voice in a book with one another? That was actually probably like one of the tougher parts was figuring out because we didn't want to write it in the plural the entire time because we do have our own experiences and our own perspectives. And so figuring out a way to switch back and forth between our voices without it sounding choppy, we wanted it to be able to flow nicely. So that was probably the biggest challenge from the outside was figuring that part out. And once we figured that out and had a good idea of how we wanted to, to break it up and break up stories and whatnot, uh, I think that the writing process came pretty easy. But I mean, from the outset, we knew it was going to be the both of us writing it. So like everything else in our lives that we've done together, it was kind of like, it would be weird if it was like just me writing a book or just her writing a book. It was always like 
just everything step in step with our with the rest of our lives. We're going to get into sort of more of your experiences as twins in this industry later on. But you mentioned earlier about uh, the fight for equity, and you guys have done both so much for women's hockey and for USA hockey. We know that the USA hockey contract is expiring in in just a couple months. What you said you want to use your platform now even more so than you have. What is the next step in terms of equity for women in hockey? Well, I think uh, in regards to the contracts that that will be expiring for the national team players, it's creating a second contract that builds upon what we created four years ago. Um, I think it goes without being said, you don't want to go backwards. Uh, you want to create more opportunities and more value for the players. Um, and so that's that's our hopefully our final stamp as players helping uh, with the negotiations and you know retiring obviously puts us in a in a a different seat, I should I should say, as the as the other teammates that are on that call or are on the negotiation calls, and so hopefully we're able to create some more significant change uh, with the negotiations coming up. And I would say outside of that, our work with our foundation um, has just been a new passion of ours that we're putting a lot more time into and creating not just more gender equity but equity across the board for young kids who who might come from lower income families and meeting basic needs at a basic level um, so that kids can focus on their focus on their school and get good grades and not have to worry about certain things like if they're getting a hot lunch at school that day and so that's something that we're really passionate about and want to continue to make a huge difference moving forward. Yeah, and then on the professional women's hockey side, we're also involved in the PWHPA, the Professional Women's Hockey Hockey Players Players Association. (laughs) Sorry, it's a mouthful. Jocelyn's actually on the board for that. But we think the next big step for women's hockey is having a professional league that the best players in the world are playing in year in and year out. And I mean, right now you, you think of the Olympics, that's once every four years and we're visible for two weeks out of that four year span. And what can we do to grow women's hockey? We think having a, a su- sustainable professional league is the next step to really getting women's hockey to the, take the next step in North America. Right. And that's exactly what I wanted to get into at this point, because we have the PWPHA and then, sorry, the PWHPA, NWHL. And then before that, uh, uh, that I know, Jocelyn, you played in the CWHL. Uh, what, how do we create sort of like um, a league that is, is cohesive? Um, rather than sort of spread out, maybe more like a WNBA or an NWSL? Well, I think the important thing to note in those examples that you mentioned is that they have the support of their male counterpart league. Um, And that's really important because there's an existing infrastructure. uh, There's existing partnerships. I mean, everything from a business standpoint is already there. And so we believe that that that's important. It's not totally a necessity, but we believe that's very important. And so what's exciting about the last couple of weeks with the PWHPA is that we just re- recently announced partnerships with the Rangers, the Leafs, the Blackhawks, the Blackhawks as of a couple of days ago. Last year we worked with the Flyers um, and there's exciting news that hasn't been announced quite yet um, for this season. And that's all during COVID when so much has been up in the air. And so we believe we have key partnerships and relationships that are that have been created and are being created right now that is going to lead to a very promising future for women's hockey but i think at a basic level what we need is the players to be treated in a professional manner and with that being said you can't be having practices at 5 30 in the morning or at night at night because all the players have full-time jobs and you're working around Mm -hmm. the workday schedule Mm -hmm. um and so i mean that's that's an easy example for people to understand but we want to create a professional environment for not just the national team players but for that next tier of players that that can compete with some of the best players in the world uh, but need they need an environment to do that and so we're really excited about the future of uh, women's hockey and we're proud to be a part of the PWHPA and we're really excited about what's coming down the road. Oh that's really great to hear yeah it's got to be 
absolutely so difficult to be a professional women's hockey player while also then trying to balance a job. But lots to think about here with the Lamaru twins. We've got a whole lot more when we return on the other side of Drinks with Binks. Don't go anywhere. Hey, it's Megan Chaika, and I just had Drinks with Binks. Hey, I'm Anson Carter, and I'm having drinks with Binks. Hey guys, welcome on back to Drinks with Binks. We are sipping on some iced coffee with the Lamaru twins. We've got Jocelyn and Monique here with us today. And you guys are three-time Olympic medalists. I say that with also having to bow down to you as the defending gold medalists in women's hockey. I, of course, am Canadian, so that was a tough one for me, but a win for women in hockey, that is what we're going with here today that we can bond over. Um, the 2020 Olympics, as we know, was postponed because of the pandemic, and we are looking toward really kind of figuring out what's gonna happen, whether they are happening this summer and whatever that looks like for the Summer Olympics or if they're canceled altogether. As athletes, as uh, as people that have gone through a situation, not like this, but have competed in Olympics, what's a, a mental challenge that some of these athletes are, are dealing with right now with the precarious nature of not knowing what their future holds? I, I honestly can't even imagine what some of the summer athletes are having to deal with right now, especially if you're dealing with lockdowns, you, if you can't get to a gym, can't get to a pool if you're a swimmer like whatever like there's so many obstacles that they're having to face right now and so what that does um to your training environment and how that affects your training can be like the amount that those athletes are probably having to adjust i can't even imagine having to go through that and then to think like with the winter olympics now only a year away and i mean when i think of the u.s women's national team they haven't been together for an actual game in over a year now. And so wow. what that's going to do, um, the effects of that is going to be interesting to see how I, hopefully the world championships still go on this year. Those are supposedly getting pushed back, um, like a six weeks or eight weeks. Hopefully that's all that happens. Um, it'll be interesting to see how teams are able to respond knowing that they haven't been able to play in almost a year. Yeah, and from a, I think there are certain sports where there's a tighter time window for peaking, and so I think just dealing with the unknown of I mean not all not all sports had their trials, so like dealing with the unknown of trials and where trials could be and all of that, and then if you're a team sport, how are you getting your competition in? Um, I think it's just it's a it's a really difficult scenario I think to be in as an athlete with so much unknown coming up. For you guys, you you know, you retired recently. In what way did sort of the the outlook of the, the Winter Olympics that you mentioned and sort of the team not being able to be together and some of these hurdles influence you guys deciding to hang them up? Yeah, I mean, it definitely played a role in our perspective and our shift in perspective. So right after the 2018 Olympics, we both um, had boys within a year, uh, six weeks apart. So I was in December, you were in January, um, had our boys. And then we were uh, committed to coming back to the national team. We were at all the USA hockey camps last year. We played in the rivalry series. And then uh, from the rivalry series to a year and a half previous to that, we had lost uh, two of our grandparents and our godfather and then becoming parents and then COVID hit. And it was just with all the life experiences going on around us, it really just put things into perspective for us and really had us, we've devoted so much of our time and energy to hockey for basically our entire lives that it was just kind of a shift in perspective and where we wanted to focus our time and energy moving forward. And COVID definitely played a role in that. Since we were home, we didn't know when the next camp was gonna be and everything that just goes into training. And so uh, for us, I think it was, it was just kind of a light bulb moment. Like it obviously was a hard decision to come to, but just kind of knowing it was the right decision for us at this time. And Monique's due in like two oh, yeah. or three weeks. Too. Yeah, I know. Oh, wow. Oh, my oh, gosh. Having another baby in two weeks, so that obviously plays a role in <laughs> We it. were at the gym a couple weeks ago, and someone that was in the gym that we don't really – we 
weren't sure who they were. They're like, oh, so are you guys still training? And I'm just like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, if you're doing two or three weeks, like you're definitely showing a very large baby in your stomach. Quite <laughs> obvious. Not in the stage where it would be uncomfortable to ask. It's very obvious that when he's pregnant. <laughs> yes. Well, yeah. I mean, uh, all those things make make a lot of sense of of why you've decided to make these decisions. And um, I have to ask, what? How would you describe your relationship with with Team Canada? Well, I think <laughs> I. The way that the two of us played, I would say we probably didn't have many fans, but after we retired, I would say what some of the Team Canada players had to say is probably the biggest compliment. Like we competed as hard as we could every single game. It didn't matter if there was a gold medal on the line or if it was an exhibition game. And so I think, um, I think they've always brought out the best in us and we've brought out the best in them and that, you know, we would not be where we are and women's hockey would not be where it is without that rivalry. And so, I mean, we grew up, our dad's from Alberta. Um, we grew up watching the Olympics and just being a fan of the game and just really being students of, you know, when the, when the U.S.-Canada rivalry was on and learned so much. But, I mean, there's nothing more competitive but more fun than playing Team Canada. Yeah, I think and even with the creation of the PWHPA, I think that that rivalry and just the it's I think the relationship between the players has slightly shifted over the last two years now. And there's just there's such a great respect, I think, between the teams. Mm -hmm. And especially now that we're all working together to create something bigger than just like Team Canada, Team USA and the bigger picture that we all see for women's hockey. So you can start to see that um, the relationship start to shift slightly. But I know like, as soon as we put jerseys on and you're on the ice, it's it, it's game on. <laughs> Yeah, I, I can't even imagine. But I got to go back to the fact that your father is Canadian, so there was a chance to play for Team Canada, is what you're saying. There could have been, yeah. yeah there could have been, yeah. We, <laughs> we should have been better when we were younger, and maybe they would have jumped on it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so wait, Canada passed on you, and so you're like, okay, I guess we'll go to America then? Well, I don't think – I think only – there was, like, a scout from Manitoba that knew we were Canadian, had Canadian citizenships. I don't know if it was, like, common knowledge, but when we were – we ended up making a Four Nations roster when we were 17 with uh, Team USA, so that ended up being – once we got called up to that roster and had the opportunity, it was – there was no going back uh, on, on it for us anyways, so – Wow, that's a huge oversight by Hockey Canada right there. <laughs> uh, I'm going to have to speak with someone, especially the fact that both of you played a large role in creating nightmares for many Canadians at the 2018 <laughs> World Cup. Excuse me, Olympics, but also the World Cups as well. You've got world championships. Uh, we got a whole lot I want to get to with you guys about being twins, and we will do that when we come back after this break on Drinks with Thanks. Don't go anywhere. Hey, this is John Cooper, head coach of your Stanley Cup champion, Tampa Bay Lightning, and I just had drinks with Binks. Hey guys, welcome back to Drinks with Binks. I'm JSB. I'm joined by the Lamaru twins, and we, of course, are going to play a twin game because we have twins on the show. And this game is called US of T, US of Twins, United States of Twins. I just made that up right now. And first of all, before we begin, do you guys decide what hairstyle to do differently to make sure people know the difference? For interviews, we do. Jocelyn usually curls her hair, and then I usually straighten mine, so it makes it easier for on everyone's end. Yeah, so then if mine's thought... straight, we don't look like the twins on The Shining or something. Yeah. Right. You have to think about that. You have to avoid that. That would not be ideal. Okay, let's get into this game that we have here. What's going to happen is I'm going to say a statement, and whoever is more likely to or the statement suits them more, you will either point to who, whoever it is, you or your sister. Lego. Who likes being a twin more? <laughs> I don't even know that one. I've never been asked that question. <laughs> yes, so neither one of you thinks you're the, the one that likes being the twin more. Okay. <laughs> um, I think this is something you might want to talk about after the interview. Yeah. Next up, who is the bigger hype woman in the locker room? Um, I, I'm not hesitating with this one. 
Okay, so both of you think you are? No, I'm gonna... I don't think we... Neither... Either of us are. I know, but if you had to pick one of us to If you had to pick it. one, for sure, yeah. Give it a turn. Okay. All right, and what's your, what's your jam? What are you putting on after a win? Ooh. Oh my gosh, I don't even know. Um, we used to put on Whitney Houston. I want to oh dance God. with somebody. That's, that's a good great. One. That oh, good that'd one. be awesome. Classic. Wish we could sing it. We don't have the rights, unfortunately. Um, who has better on ice chirps? <laughs> you clean it up here. Jocelyn goes man. for the kill, though. I'll tell you. I'm sure <laughs> goes for the kill. What's a okay? Very quickly, what's a good chirp? Like, what's a go-to chirp when you're just like, I need to just get under this this chick's skin. Oh my gosh, I don't even know if I can say it. Um, no, nah, that's what I like to hear. It's probably really inappropriate. Yeah. What do you just say? People will think less of me. I don't even... Um, okay. <laughs> yeah. Well, give us Normally it has nothing to do with hockey, and it, it, you know what? A good chirp makes someone think a little bit and go, oh. <laughs> exactly. Get in their head. Just... Take out real estate, make them not be able to handle the puck. Okay, uh, last skater in a shootout. Who is taking that shot? <laughs> <laughs> yes, of course, Jocelyn, 2018 champion who scored in the shootout to win the Olympics over Canada. Okay, who, and, and on top of that, who is happier to beat Canada in 2018? Oh, I mean... That's a, that's a tie. Yeah. That's an even, that's yeah. an even tie. tie there. Okay, twin tie. Both of you were pretty happy to dance on the grave of Team Canada that day, right? <laughs> they danced on ours a few times, so it felt good. They have, yeah. they have. It's a little bit of, yes, a little push and pull, of course. It's a fun, nice rivalry between the two countries. Um, okay, that is all that we have here for the U.S. of twins, but let's do one little quick one. Who, who loves iced coffee more? Probably oh, me. Yeah, definitely. For sure. All right, Monique gets one in there. Well, this has been a lovely game. I think we still have to debate who likes being a twin more. That's definitely something that will come out of this. But otherwise, thank you guys for drinking and banking here. And we will have a whole lot more to come after this. Subscribe on YouTube and follow us on all social media at Fubo Sports. Hey guys, we've had an awesome time drinking and pinking here with the Lamaru twins. And guys, you have a book that is now on shelves, on stores, online now. Tell us where we can find it. Yep, so our book is out now. It's called Dare to Make History. You can get it on Amazon, Target Online, or you can just go to your local bookstore to get it. So we're really excited two years in the making and it's finally out. Awesome. And it is both of them writing it together. And before we go, just to let us know where we can find you on social media. Oh, <laughs> miss Q <Miss>. there. Yeah. <laughs> um, you can follow us on Facebook and Twitter at Lamaru twins. And then Instagram, we have our own handles. I'm Jocelyn USA 17 and Monique is Monique Lamb seven. Yes. Correct. Got it. <laughs> Love it. Okay, well, guys, thank you so much for joining us here on the show today. And thanks so much for everything you've done for women's hockey and continue to do, even though we are on different sides of the border. Well, we're technically on the same side right now. I live in America. I have to remember that sometimes. But anyway, you guys have been great. And if you guys out there want to see any more of our episodes, you know where to find us at Fubo Sports on YouTube. Tons of episodes, drinking and banking. Until next time, bottoms up, bitches. Cheers. <laughs>